Alrighty guys, so the guild boss, obviously it's been reset, so I'm sure there's a lot of trial and errors on everyone's end. So I'm trying to figure out on how to go about it. Now, the best way to approach this new game mode is to be like my teammates, the hunters. They are the damage dealers. Me, on the other hand, I'm just here to support. That is right. So when doing the guild boss, realistically, you want to build a supportive Sun Jim Wu, which obviously that's going to catch a lot of people off because who has a support gear set up for Sun Jim Wu at the ready? Not many. Probably most of you guys don't, but either way, that is pretty much the premise on going about on tackling uh, the guild boss and potentially scoring high, of course. So I did record the run, which I'll show you guys in just a second. Obviously, you can see my score, um, but I've still got a second run to do, so I'm going to use that to kind of do a little bit more experiments. But pretty much the weapons themselves is what I was utilizing is the Grimoire as well as the um, Moon, uh, the, the Moon Shadow Dagger weapons, of course. I will say um, you want to make sure that you're uh, applying things that can help the team to do more damage. That's the key thing when you're using your Sun Jun Wu. So as you guys can see, for the most part, I would say most people typically do run the water team as their main team, which is absolutely fine. The way I tackled it was I looked at all of my teams and I'm just like, right, my main DPS, they, they, they've got their breakage support, they've got the um, uh, greed uh, kit support for the um, crits and whatnot, and then they got their supporters. So obviously light looking good, wi uh, water looking good. And then if you look at wind, of course, um, I had to take out Jinchou because I need Libora. Libora is very vital for this fight itself. And so that kind of puts my wind team in that awkward position of not having that tank breakage support, of course. And so what I decided to do, I was like, right, let me take team A as me being their breaker. So that's exactly what I did. So going off from the, um, let me just show you guys. So this is the artifacts. I, I made sure to have some sort of decent DPS stats going on, of course, but I am officially my team's breaker. So that's kind of what I went with. And then because of that, I, um, Oh, is my game okay? Is my, is my game gonna crash? To be fair, I've been on, <laughs> I've been running this for so many hours. Um, oh my God, yeah, okay, he is running slow. Um, but yeah, skill-wise, I opted out with the, uh, um, I, I, this is like highly recommended, by the way, Almighty Break, um, but you get the 10% uh, increased damage um, or skill hits, yeah. When skill hits, increases the target's damage taken by 10%. So, like I said, you wanna have um, skills that can help you out with, uh, your team allowing you to do uh, allowing them to do more damage of course now i also did apply um the death dance high speed rotation so obviously because i'm I, i'm in need of breakage attacks otherwise my gear set is, it's going to be invalid um so that's kind of another reason why uh, the power gauge is charged by 1.5 percent when you are hit i mean that's never going to get activated because i'm never going to get hit well, unless you do get hit by a slight chance but either way um yeah so i decided to go with that skill um when it comes to blessings, you want the uh, defense decrease. So when you attack, it decreases the target's defense. So that way your team can do a lot of damage. Um, if you have We Are One being the newest blessing, get it on because you're basically providing support to the team that you're with, AKA my instance being Amamiya, um, Hansemi and Libora. They're all getting a 3.5 increase in their attack, defense and HP, all right? And then, what are the other ones I have? Ooh. Oh yeah, I've got the, uh, yeah, so cooldown your skills, reduced by 12%, that's gonna be helpful. And then having the swiftness, so you can now have dash one additional time. There is an 18% chance for your dash cooldown to reset upon dashing. This is gonna be vital, so that way you can maneuver yourself, because the one thing that is going to be key is you wanna consistently make sure that you're shadow stepping. Um, so having this is gonna be huge. Because if you want shadow stepping enough, then obviously the damage output won't be as much as you would like it to be, and you won't be able to get your rage meter to a good amount. For me personally, I was trying to hit for seven or an, an upward, so that's kind of uh, a big play when it comes to having this uh, blessing. So ultimately, this is kind of what I was rocking with. Um, so yeah, crit damage near enough at 200, 50% crit rate, and then attack 21k, of course. So that's pretty much the build that I decided to go with Sun Jun Wu. Now, in terms of the characters, so obviously, um, Chai Yen, she's got the curse set. Um, Go's got the break set, or the greed set, sorry. And uh, Min has got the um, uh, blessing set, of course. 
So I tried to keep it the same. So if I show you guys, yeah. So it's it's, it's all basically the same. Um, now I will say I am considering changing up Cheyenne to where rather than giving her a full curse set, I kind of want to give her the expert set on the left hand side. Sorry, on the right hand side, and on the left hand side, giving her the one hit kill because I want her ultimate to just nuke, and because she's getting that um, uh, min support, um, yeah, her ultimate might be something beautiful or I could give her the toughness set to cater to crit and the reason why I'm mentioning on utilizing other kits that are slightly under level compared to the curse set is because um, with Amamiya I've given her the full curse set but I've also given her the expert set and uh, it worked like an absolute treat. Um, Alicia has also got the full curse set of course I was also considering giving her a um, expert set with the curse set but I just kept it as is so um, yeah don't shy away of utilizing um, the other gear sets. That's something which I'm gonna try and capitalize on when I do my second run. If, if, it, if it works out to be a lot better, you'll see a video. Lee Bora, I did the blessing set because again, um, I mean to be fair, you can put it in the offensive manner, but I just kept there in the uh, blessing set just to kind of uh, furthermore support Amamiya, of course. Um, with Hansemi, I did keep on the uh, Angel and White set, so that way again more healing to be given and then pushing more for Amamiya, of course, so there's that. Um, and ultimately, yeah, that's kind of all the characters on the builds that I decided to go with with them. All right, so this was the run. I'm pretty sure insane. So at the very beginning, um, you can shadow step, which is what I would, would recommend. And pretty much the process of me shadow stepping was shadow step into the moon shadow daggers, into the almighty break skill, and then using the grimoire. That was kind of like the rotation is what I was trying to go with. And then of course, because of the other skill that I have, um, the, the the reset on that is super, super quick. So that's just there just to kind of furthermore um, support the team in terms of activate my uh, uh, set, of course. Now, you have to be on the ball here. The one thing which I will say with this fight is, and, and this is the reason why you've got the blessing to give you a lot more dashes, is because you're gonna see me consistently dashing and trying to get to the front because you are going to have to maneuver your way into the front of the dragon itself to make sure that you've got that constant chance of shadow stepping. Shadow stepping at a consistent rate, as you all know, um, will decrease the enemy's uh, uh, defense, and then from that, your whole team can benefit from doing a ton of damage. So you're gonna see that throughout, of course. But again, every time I shadow step, I'm keeping with the rotation of doing the moon shadow dagger, doing the vertical of the almighty break skill then i'm into the grimoire if i have my ultimate at the ready i'm gonna throw that off now there is another build which i'll speak about that you can do with the ultimate which i know a few people have done and it can also help you out on getting some high score which i'll quickly briefly speak about but this worked out beautifully for me i just kind of wanted to cater to support and Amamiya even furthermore now this fight can get annoying because i'm telling you again like i said you know i've already mentioned it there's so much happening on screen that maneuvering your way to the right spot it's such an absolute pain so yeah when i so, so that was a, a a missed opportunity for me to get another shadow step there but it is what it is um yep so there's obviously a scenario where there's going to be a little breakage area uh, stop so you just want to make sure that well if you've got the break um skills then you can furthermore to help the uh break units and then from that point on you just kind of go in obviously lee bora supporting you in the dark area so that's pretty solid of course but yeah, just piling on the damage and just being very wary on on when to shadow step. That that was ultimately my goal. I'm just like, the minute I can see an opportunity to get shadow step, go for it. Because you are playing in that support role. It's going to be weird. It's going to be weird because obviously <laughs> throughout playing solo leveling Arise, it's always been us being on the offensive, right? Us being using our hunters to support us. But the roles are reversed. This what th this is what makes the guild boss fairly interesting. Is that the roles are reversed, and it's just like we're having to do everything to making sure that we can maximize our damage for our hunters. So it, yeah, a bit, bit of an awkward play, but either way, um, it was it was fairly chill. So uh, yeah, again, just dropping that, kind of slowing down time. Teammates are coming in, and uh, I was unaware because obviously the rage eight bar. Of health isn't as much as I thought it would be so I actually could have I don't know I feel like I could have gotten a little bit well if, if I was able to clear him out a lot sooner then maybe I could have gotten to ra uh, rate or over to the rage 9 bar but anyway so clearing up only a few seconds left I was literally panicking here I was like please give me the 7 yeah he's only got 1500 on the um, rage 8 bar that's crazy that's not that much so yeah we could probably squeeze out 8 rage bars but 
There we go, that was essentially the run, and uh, ultimately the outcome was... Boom. Which isn't too bad. So, Amamiya, again, I was using myself to support her, so that worked out beautifully. Again, uh, the water team is solid, you know, uh, and then of course, Chaiyan is... I, I do want to try and utilize a different set on her, in hopes to kind of cater more to her kit, to see if the outcome would change. Because I feel like it might, just kind of forgetting about the curse and kind of catering to more of the like the crit side and that how her ultimate does a lot more damage. So maybe considering doing like a one hit kills an expert type of um, kit build for her, that, could, that, that, that might be able to bump her up a little bit. So yeah, things to test out. But ultimately, I was very pleased with this run. You know, it's not too bad of a run. You know, we'll take we'll take what we get. As long as you're hitting in total, your rage count being above 11. That way you're maximizing your chances to get decent rewards. Just an FYI, as long as you get uh, above 11, including both of your runs, then you're good. Now, I did speak about the other build, so let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So pretty much the other build, which um, it, it's it's basically the ultimate spam build. So what you would do is, obviously that would stay the same, this would stay the same. Um, you would change up your first skill, or your second skill, whichever one, and you would apply the Ascension Break, because it will obviously not only give you Break, but it also charges up your power gauge and cools down the ultimate skill, right? So you would equip that, and then from that point on, you would then uh, apply the Blessing Set. And the great thing about the Blessing Set is I actually have a Offensive Blessing Set, so... But I think I've put that on to um, Lee Bora at the minute. But yeah, so this would obviously cater to the ultimate spam, and so from that... Um, so yeah, activates when tagging out using a support skill or using the ultimate skill. Increase the user's damage dealt by 20% and restore a little bit of healing. So yeah, pretty much, again, you're utilizing him in that supportive manner to furthermore cater to the DPS team that you're selected to. And from that, they'll get that increase in damage and it will activate when you're uh, ulting. And again, with the blessing set and by having that one skill, you will get a lot of spammy ults going on, right? You'll be able to uh, rank up, uh, sorry, rack up <laughs> a lot of ultimates. So there is that build. There's the Blessing build and there's the Greed build. Um, again, with the way that I decided to set my uh, team up, I went with the Greed build. I was very pleased with the outcome, but I know I can do a little bit better, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea and thoughts on using Sun Jun Wu in that supportive manner. So again, when you're doing the guild boss, you're not using Sun Jun Wu as an attacking character. You're using him as a supportive character. It's weird, it's gonna cost a lot of people in terms of preparing a supportive version, uh, kit for him. Unless you've got a supportive kit that, from another character that you can uh, uh, put onto him, and then that way you can maybe put, push the offensive kit that you have for Sundry Wu onto that other character. I mean, that could potentially work out. Uh, I mean, it'll be a bit awkward. <laughs> but I mean, either way, it might work out to kind of save you on the golds and whatnot.